This past August, I stumbled upon a fantastic deal on an older Dell Optiplex through Facebook Marketplace. A local seller was parting with their Optiplex 7020 for just $25, which also included two monitors. I've already created two videos showcasing what I acquired in this deal, along with a few upgrades to boost the desktop PC's gaming performance. Today, I'm excited to share some additional upgrades I made to transform the Optiplex into an even more capable gaming rig for playing lower-end PC games. If you haven't checked out the previous videos in this series, I highly recommend doing so. To recap, the PC, as I received it, came with an Intel Core i5-4590, 8GB of DDR3 RAM and dual channel, a 290W power supply, a 1TB hard drive, and a Radeon R5-240 display adapter. After cleaning up the components and the case, I initiated some basic upgrades. First and foremost, I acquired two more sticks of DDR3 RAM, boosting the total to 16GB. Then I added a 512GB SSD for a faster Windows experience and upgraded to a Radeon RX 560 for a significant boost in gaming performance. All of this, including the initial cost of the system, came to just $85. The end result was quite satisfying as the system could handle less demanding titles at 1080p and some more demanding games at lower resolutions. However, I still believe that the Optiplex had room for more upgrades, and its dull black and grey case gave it the appearance of the office computer that it was meant to be. Today, I'll be revealing the next set of upgrades I've made to the Optiplex, demonstrating the kind of performance improvements you can expect if you decide to undertake a similar project. The first significant change I made to the Dell was giving it a fresh coat of paint. While I don't have extensive experience with modding larger components like this, I put in my best effort to ensure that the end result would be worth it. I settled on spray painting the case white because I found it to offer a sleek and fresh appearance. Achieving this look required applying numerous thin coats of paint and a lot of patience along the way. Once the paint had dried, I added a few layers of clear coat to both protect the case's surface and lend it a more matte finish. Despite a few minor imperfections, I'm quite content with how it turned out. All in all, I believe that this transformation represents a substantial visual upgrade from its previous state. And even better, I did the entire paint job for just around $10. The two performance upgrades that I made to the system are somewhat less substantial compared to the ones I showcased in the previous video. Initially, I stuck with the i5-4590 that came with this computer. To boost the processing power this time around, I acquired an i7-4770S for a mere $27 on eBay. Based on my research, this chip is essentially identical to the standard 4770 with a slightly lower base clock speed of 3.1 GHz and a TDP of 65 watts compared to the 84 watts of the non-S variant. Nevertheless, the 4 cores and 8 threads provided by this CPU should represent a notable improvement over the i5. As for the graphics card, I slotted in the low profile GTX 1650 which I previously introduced in my last video on the channel. I managed to snag this for just $50, with its low TDP and a significant performance and VRAM boost compared to the RX 560, this card promises to deliver a more immersive overall gaming experience. To put this theory to the test, I ran the newly upgraded version of my Optiplex through some of the same titles I had previously tested. First, I used Unigen Heaven to benchmark at 1080p low. The PC achieved an impressive average FPS of 190.5 and scored 4,796, a significant improvement from the previous 116 FPS average and the 2,932 score. Superposition at 1080p low showcased the GPU upgrade even more with an average of 97 FPS and a score of 12,930, which is more than double of what the RX 560 provided with its 45 FPS average and 6,044 score. Grand Theft Auto V was tested at maximum settings in 1080p, resulting in a 74 FPS average. In the last video, I tested the PC with the lowest settings and achieved an 83 FPS average. I did notice some fairly high CPU usage in the various situations during my gameplay this time around. The CPU issue became even more pronounced in Fortnite. I used the performance rendering mode and low settings with epic view distance. The CPU usage was consistently near its maximum. Nevertheless, after playing a few matches and overcoming early game stutters, the system was able to push between 150 and 200 FPS in most cases, a considerable improvement over the 100 FPS from the previous iteration of the Optiplex. In the Horizon Zero Dawn benchmark, I observed an average of 70 FPS at 1080p with low settings. In the last video, I tested the PC at 720p with low settings and achieved an incomparable result of just 38 FPS. 
The performance was also quite solid in Cyberpunk 2077, resulting in an average of 57 FPS at 1080p with the lowest settings. I didn't test the i5-RX 560 combination in this title, but I imagine it would have performed even worse than the result achieved with Horizon Zero Dawn in 720p. In conclusion, I believe I pushed the Optiplex to near its limit in terms of the available upgrades within the constraints of this platform. With the exception of a slightly more powerful CPU like the 4790, and utilizing a SATA to 6-pin adapter for a more capable GPU, the two upgrades showcased in this video represent a substantial enhancement while working within the confines of the limiting 290 watt power supply. The visual upgrade, thanks to the paint job, adds a significant touch to the style of the overall package. Creating this video was a very enjoyable experience for me. I'm not entirely sure what I'll do with the Optiplex now, but more than likely I'll hold on to it for future videos. Please feel free to share any suggestions you may have. If you haven't already, please give this video a thumbs up if you found it enjoyable. Also, consider subscribing to the channel if you're interested in similar content in the future. And as always, leave any suggestions or questions in the comment section. Thank you for your support.